what exactly does dimension mean? We all say that we live in three-dimensional space. We all say that if I take a piece of paper and I sketch something, I'm sketching something in two dimensions. But what really is dimension? And in particular, if I choose some subspace like this plane here, how do I define the dimension of that? Now, you might be guessing correctly that the dimension of this plane is going to be two dimensions. But if I get something weird, some other subspace, like say the null space, it might not be immediately obvious what I should define to be the dimension of a null space or of a column space. So in this video, we're going to give our precise definition of what does dimension mean. And it's going to align and agree with all of the notions of dimension that we already have in our heads. But it's going to be extended so we can apply it to any subspace of a vector space such as Rn. Now, one of the key properties about this plane that we have here is that it has two basis vectors. It's got two different basis vectors, the red and the yellow, and these two different basis vectors, they come along and they span everything. And they make their own coordinate system. They make their own grid system. Now, we would look at a plane and we would normally say, well, duh, it's dimension two. But it also has this property that it's got these two different basis vectors. So why don't we define that to be the notion of dimension? If I have a particular subspace S, then the dimension is defined to be the number of basis vectors. Now, one thing I want to point out is I've given one basis for this, one pair of vectors, and it's made it a coordinate system. But what if I give you a different basis? So here's a different basis for the same subspace. I haven't changed the subspace, it's the same. But the basis, the coordinate system that I describe this subspace by has changed. Now, it looks a little bit different, but keep in mind that again we have two different basis vectors. And indeed, the number of basis vectors is always unique. If we've got a subspace, maybe it's this plane, maybe it's something else. I come up with the basis for it, you come up with the basis for it. Now, you and I may disagree a little bit. We may have different vectors in our bases. However, if it's the same subspace, you and I have to have the same number of basis vectors. What the vectors are may be different, but the number of them is the same. So in, in this particular subspace, we saw two different ways that I could write basis vectors, but both of those bases had two of them in them. And indeed, this is a theorem, I'm not going to prove it in this video, but it's an important theorem that the number of basis vectors is unique. And so this definition is well defined that you and I will always compute the same dimension of any subspace because the number of basis vectors is always the same. Okay, let's look at a couple sort of funky examples, some edge case examples. The first of them is that the dimension of Rn is just n. It seems really obvious, like we're living in three-dimensional space, the dimension of that should be three, but why is that the case? Well, I have to give you a basis, and it's the number of basis vectors. But I already have a nice basis for Rn, it's the standard basis. The standard basis, the E1 out of the En, they span everything, they're literally independent. If you put the vectors into the columns of a matrix, then there's a leading one in every single column, and so it is linearly independent. This is really a basis because there's n vectors in it, the dimension is thus n. So we, we have the happy result that, that R3 that we live in really is three-dimensional, as we've always said. Okay, here's a different pathological example. It's the smallest possible subspace of Rn is just the zero vector. And I claim the dimension of the subspace that is just the zero vector is indeed equal to zero. By the way, you might remember subspaces had three properties. They were closed under addition, closed under scalar multiplication, but they also had the zero vector in it. That was a requirement. So this is the smallest subspace that could ever possibly exist. The empty set isn't a subspace. Now, what about a basis for this? Can I come up with a basis vector for it? Well, the only vector that's even in it is the zero vector. So the only candidate to be a basis vector is the zero vector. Now the set of vectors, which is just a zero vector, is a span for this subspace because the zero vector can always be written as a linear combination of the zero vector. Pretty easy. However, the set that's just the zero vector is not a basis. And the reason is it fails to be linearly independent. It spans it, but it's not linearly independent. For example, if I take a linear combination of this particular vector, like seven times zero, well, then that's equal to zero, but the coefficient seven is not zero. Remember, linear independence said if you take a linear combination equal to zero, all of the coefficients have to be zero. But that's not the case here. So the only possible basis I could ever have is not a basis because it's not linearly independent, so there is no basis. And so we just say the dimension of this is zero. 
In the next video, I'm going to look at what is the dimension of the null space and the column space. As in, I need to figure out how many basis vectors are there in the null space and the column space.